Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn about a really big concept in science, um, which is the periodic table of elements. So a lot of people have been wanting to learn this and I have just learned this in um, a lot about this in sixth grade. So um, let's go ahead and start. First of all, we're going to look at elements. The periodic table is made of elements. So what even is an element? Elements are pure substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by any physical or chemical means. A pure substance is a substance in which there is only one type of particle. The periodic table is made of all the elements there are. There are 118 elements on the periodic table. Okay. Now properties. Physical and chemical properties. Each element has a unique set of properties. Some physical properties include boiling point and melting point, which is the point um, where an element boils or melts. Density, which is mass divided by volume. Ductility, which is the ability to be stretched out into a wire. Malleability, the ability to be mashed and hardness, hardness, state, texture, luster, and conductivity. Luster, if you don't know this, it's basically um, how shiny it is. Some chemical properties include reactivity, flammability, toxicity, and combustibility. Also acidity. Reactivity is when the elements react, Flammability is the ability to be flammable. Toxicity is the um, ability to be toxic. Combustibility is when it explodes or if it explodes. And acidity is if it's acid. So let's move on to the categories. Okay, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. That is what the periodic table of elements, all the elements are grouped into. So, um, as you can see in this picture, all the red elements are metals, all the yellow elements are metalloids, and all the blue elements are nonmetals. Um, so don't freak out if you don't might if you might not know what these are, because we're going to go deeper into these category. So, metals. Metals are shiny, good conductors of thermal energy, good conductors of electrical energy. Conductors are basically, um, it'll allow the energy to pass. Um, they are malleable, ductile, and lustrous. Examples of metals are iron and copper, which you probably see most of the time. Okay, now let's go on to nonmetals. Nonmetals are dull, which is not shiny, poor conductors of thermal energy, poor conductors of electricity. They are brittle and unmalleable, which is um, not being able to be mashed that much. So, samples of nonmetals are neon and graphite. And over here you can see sulfur, nitrogen, selenium, and bromine. They're all nonmetals. Okay, let's move on to metalloids. Metalloids are also called semiconductors. They have the properties of both metals and nonmetals. So you can see silicon, boron, antimony, and germanium, but all of the metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium. Okay. Now let's look at the table separation. So this whole thing is the periodic table of elements and how is it grouped into. So um, in this picture, it shows um, red as metals and yellow as metalloids and blue as nonmetals, but that's not how, um, the, that's not the official way how the elements are grouped into. They're not grouped into colors. So it's just showing us how the elements are grouped into. 
So non-metals are found to the right of the zigzag. Over here, you can see this black zigzag. Um, the blue ones are non-metals, and they're found to the right. Metalloids are found along the border of the zigzag. Over here, where you can see the yellow. And metals are found to the left of the zigzag line. So all these red ones. For the nonmetals, the only exception is hydrogen, which is over here on the corner. Okay, there we go. Now, symbols. As you can see, you're probably confused why there are so much different symbols here and why doesn't it say the actual name of the element. But chemical symbols are how the elements on the periodic table are represented. For example, the chemical symbol AU equals gold. So, the chemical symbol BE equals beryllium, which is beryllium. Um, this element is a metal. Um, the symbol SI is silicone. It represents silicone. So, this metal is a me oh, this is a metalloid because it's along the border of the zigzag line. The chemical symbol O equals oxygen. This element is a non-metal and is what we need every day. Okay. We're going to see this short video about the genius of Mendeleev's periodic table. So he created a version of the periodic table, so. The periodic table is instantly recognizable. It's not just in every chemistry lab worldwide. It's found on t-shirts, coffee mugs, and shower curtains. The periodic table isn't just another trendy icon. It's a massive slab of human genius. Up there with the Taj Mahal, the Mona Lisa, and the ice cream sandwich. And the table's creator, Dmitry Mendeleev, is a bona fide science hall of famer. But why? What's so great about him and his table? Is it because he made a comprehensive list of the known elements? Nah, you don't earn a spot in science Valhalla just for making a list. Besides, Mendeleev was far from the first person to do that. Is it because Mendeleev arranged elements with similar properties together? Not really, that had already been done too. So what was Mendeleev's genius? Let's look at one of the first versions of the periodic table from around 1870. Here we see elements designated by their two-letter symbols arranged in a table. Check out the entry at the third column, fifth row. There's, There's a dash, dash there. From that, that unassuming placeholder springs the, the raw brilliance of Mendeleev. That, that dash is science. By putting, By putting that, that dash there, Dmitry was making a bold statement. statement. He, he said, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing here, here you'll, you'll haven't discovered this element yet. In the meantime, the meantime I'm going to give it a name. It's one, one step away from aluminum, so we'll call, call it echo aluminum. Echo being Sanskrit for one. Nobody's found echo aluminum yet. So we, so we don't know anything about it, right? Wrong. Wrong. Based, Based on, on where it's located, I can tell you all about it. First, First of all, an atom of echo aluminum has an atomic weight of 68, about 68 times heavier than a hydrogen. When echo aluminum is isolated, you'll see it's a solid metal at room temperature. It's shiny and conducts heat really well. It can be flattened into a sheet, stretched into a wire, but its melting point is low, like freakishly low. Oh, oh, and a cubic, cubic centimeter of it will weigh, weigh six grams. grams. Mendeleev could predict all of these things simply from where, where the blank spot was and his understanding, understanding of how the elements surrounding him came. A few, a few years, years after this prediction, a French, a French guy named Paul Emile Le Comte de Bois Bolton discovered a new element in ore samples and named it gallium after Gaulle, the historical name for France. Gallium is one step away from aluminum on the periodic table. It's echo aluminum. So, so we're Mendeleev's predictions, right? Gallium's atomic weight is 69.72. A cubic centimeter of it weighs 5.9 grams. It's a solid metal at room temperature, but it melts at a paltry 30 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. 
It melts, it melts in your mouth and, and in your hand. Not, not only did Mendeleev completely nail gallium, he predicted other elements that were, that were unknown, unknown, unknown at the time. Scamia, germania. The element he called echomanganese is now called technetium. Technetium is so rare it couldn't be isolated until it was synthesized. In a, in a cyclotron, cyclotron in 1937, almost 70 years after Dimitri predicted its existence, 30 years after he died, Dimitri died without a Nobel Prize in 1907, but he wound up receiving a much more exclusive honor. In 1955, scientists at UC Berkeley successfully created 17 atoms of a previously undiscovered element. This element filled an empty spot in the periodic table at number 101, and was, it was officially named Mendelevium in 1963. There have been well over 800 Nobel Prize winners, but only 15 scientists have an element in them. So the next time you stare at a periodic table, whether it's on the wall of a university classroom or on a $5 coffee mug, Dimitri Mendeleev, the architect of the periodic table, will be staring back. Okay, so this is the end of a brief view of the periodic table. I hope you guys enjoyed this. So thank you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.